Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Selby series. Selby is one of 11 subdivisions of the county of North Yorkshire. It's made up of 74 civil parishes, a lot of which are very small. Which one are we in this week? Welcome back to Selby everybody on what is a glorious sunny morning and it's this kind of morning that makes structures like that behind me look absolutely fantastic. This is a church that's got a 150 foot high spire. That's quite a large one. That's going to be both our start point and our end point as we walk around Hemingborough. This Selby episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. The 12th century church of St Mary the Virgin is Hemingborough's most iconic feature. This will be where the main walk ends later. It's one of the most magnificent churches in the country. Let's have a walk around Hemingborough first. This is a small but ever-growing village located approximately 5 miles from Selby and 4 miles from Howden, mainly to the south of the A63. It's got quite easily distinguishable new and old areas. The older areas are to the west along Main Street around and alongside the church, whilst the newer areas are more to the east. It's served pretty well by almost every amenity you can think of. As well as the church, there's a Methodist chapel, a shop, a primary school, a nursery, and a huge playing field for the local children. The surrounding area makes up part of the Humberhead Levels, and it's flat land mainly used for mixed agriculture. Hemingborough also sits just to the north of the River Ouse. It's not that long ago that Hemingborough was in the East Riding. It was transferred from the East Riding to the then new county of North Yorkshire in 1974. Oh, welcome back, old friend. It's been a while. The Trans Pennine Trail follows Landing Lane for a time, and it's handily marked for cyclists here. Route 65 is the number, by the way. From this screen, you can see just how dominant the church spire is. In 1989, Karen Keating and Blue Peter replaced the cockerel on top of the spire, which had been damaged for several years. Also on this screen, we've got a bench which was placed here not for a jubilee, but rather for the Queen's 90th birthday. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that particular commemoration. So now we're heading down Landing Lane, and this is a good circular village with plenty of little footpaths which connect areas together. The easiest way to access the River Ouse from here is by going all the way to the end of Landing Lane, and that's something we'll be doing later. For now though, cop for some demographics. This next area is primarily residential, so here's some interesting bits as we walk. The origin of Hemingborough's name is somewhat uncertain. Borough or Burg usually means fort, so the name may be a reference to the Burg of a Viking named Heminger, the Burg of the followers of a man called Hemmer, or a Burg by a fish weir, for which the Old English is the word Heming. The latter may be the most likely, as Hemingborough used to be a lot closer to the ooze than it is today. In the Middle Ages, the river broke through a meander, leaving the village some distance away. 
the old course of the ooze is known as Old Mill Field Drain now, and Hemingborough, despite being circular today, is still technically defined as a linear village set around a single main street. Fun fact, that single main street used to be called Town Street. Hemingborough was once a much larger parish too. It once included the townships of Balby, Osgoodby, Cliff with Lund, South Duffield, Brackenholm with Woodhall, and Menthorpe with Bowthorpe. All of those became separate civil parishes in 1866. Plenty of these little green spaces around here in Hemingborough. That's what I like about places like this. They look after themselves. Visitors like myself, who've never been here before, are able to just walk around and just admire how well kept it all is. One of the village's famous historical names would be Robert de Hemingberg, a royal clerk who became master of the rolls in Ireland. He was born here in the late 13th century. It's also thought, but unconfirmed, that Walter of Hemingborough, one of Britain's 14th century chroniclers, came from here too. His chronicle can be found in the British Museum. Ah, finally a landmark. This is Hemingborough's preschool. The building dates to 1847 and it was used as a school until 1878 when a larger school was erected further along what is now School Road. In 1295, a charter was granted by Edward I for a market at Hemingborough every Thursday and a six-day fair and feast in the second week of August. In 1780, that changed to the last week in June. In later years, even after World War II had ended, the last week in June was still called the Feast Week by some of the older families, although today that phrase is rarely heard. Here we have Back Lane, and given the development of the village over time, it sort of lost its character. Before Hemingborough grew larger, it literally bordered open countryside. So you see, it's very residential, Hemingborough. Lots of houses here. Uh, I imagine it's something of a commuter village for uh, Selby and for uh, Ghoul as well. Now we're in an area here where all the streets begin Chestnut. For example, we've got Chestnut Garth here. There you go. I think this is Chestnut Road. And basically this loops around to the right this way. Everything up here is Chestnut and it takes us back towards Hemingborough School. That's the next major landmark. And we need to walk across a playing field which will take us up to the A63 and then we're back down uh, the main street towards the church and that'll be the main walk done. It's not a very big place this, it's got uh, a few odds and ends hasn't it, but it is generally speaking very residential. Hemingborough once had a grammar school. There are half a dozen references of masters being licensed to teach at it between 1619 and 1807, but no more is known of the school. It may have been held in the church where the chapel on the south side of the chancel was described as a schoolroom in 1750. Here on School Road is the modern primary school. Next up is a bus stop. According to my sources, Hemingborough is served by three buses. These are the numbers 1, 3 and 4A, all three of which go to Selby. Opposite the bus stop, there's the parish notice board on the side of one of the buildings at the village's playing field. And now we're on the playing field. Hemingborough has a few local sports teams, a couple of which are named on the side of the pavilion here. One of them is Hemingborough United Football Club. Then there's Hemingborough Cricket Club, who are one of the leading clubs in the Selby area. The club run first 11 and second 11 teams and have junior cricket from under nines upwards. Now I'm more of a football fan than I am a cricket fan, but I do appreciate seeing a cricket pitch that looks absolutely fabulous. That is immaculately well kept. Well done to the groundsman here, who obviously keeps that looking very nice. And also to the guy who keeps Hemingborough Hemingborough, can't even say it. Bowls Club looking nice as well. Look at this. That's like a carpet, that is. It's fantastic. It's good to see people who actually look after their locality. It's brilliant. There's a small play area over here as well. And we're heading on to the A63 in a moment. And uh, we're almost done with the main walk around. There's a few more things to catch. And the most important thing, of course, is the church. We still need to see that. Out of the playing field, our next stop is Hag Lane Green, which can be found just off this road. This is the A63, which is Hemingborough's main transport link, both north and south. And it's on the A63 where we stumble upon R&R &R Country. 
This has carved out a reputation as the area's go-to retailer for equestrian and country wear over the last 20 years. R&R Country opened in 1997 and it has a second branch at Melton Mowbray in Leicestershire. It was established more than 100 years ago by agricultural merchants Robert and Ralph Falkingham. Bricks have long been made at a number of sites north of the village. A string of ponds along Hag Lane is a testament to that fact. These ponds are now known as Hag Lane Green. The ponds were formed as a result of digging for clay in the 1800s. They've been turned into a brilliant little local nature reserve now, with a neat little wooden path alongside. Hag Lane Green stretches for some way north, so I only opted to go as far as the second pond. I highly recommend this shady spot, it's probably the perfect place for a walk with your dog. So another place that once had a brickyard again, it's over there in that sort of general direction. We're not going over there though, we're going back down this road which will take us down eventually towards the church. We are heading for it. I keep saying that we're nearly done with the uh, the main walk don't I but uh, to be fair there's a bit more here than I thought. Water Lane takes us back into Hemingborough's oldest area which is quite rightly a conservation area. Now Water Lane why might that be named as such? Well, it might have something to do with there literally being water here. There's a small pond set back from the road surrounded by another well-maintained green. The majority of historic buildings within the conservation area are detached villas or village farms, but there are some terraces, including one here and one on Main Street. Most of the older village houses lie along Main Street, with their garths, an old word meaning gardens, stretching back to the west towards the old course of the Ouse. There are some small businesses in this area. Take this one for example. If you're passing through on the Trans Pennine Trail and you need your bike repaired, this house here could be your saviour. And now we come to Main Street with its aforementioned Terrace Row, somewhat unusual for a village. These will be spacious properties. Check out the ground floor bay windows. Okay, last bit on foot. We've got a pub, we've got a shop, and we've got the church. There are two pubs on Main Street. The first of these is the Fox and Pheasant. How's that for a great country name? We'll get to the Crown in a few moments. There's a shop over the road. I know this is a chain store, but it's so good to see a village which still has its own shop. I'm finding as I travel around, far too many that don't. Hemingborough has more than just one shop. This is Mama Brown's, and as well as being a family-run bakery, it's also a sandwich shop and catering company. Next we have the Old Hall, which is a Grade 2 listed late 18th century house. This should not be confused with Hemingborough Hall, built in 1842, which stands on School Road. On the theme of old buildings, as we head closer to the church, we have a Chinese takeaway, which is right next door to Hemingborough's old post office. And here we have Hemingborough's Methodist Chapel, which is part of the Ghoul and Selby circuit. Since 2017, this has also been a village community hall. The chapel for worship is now at the back. Okay, we finally reached the church. It seems like a long time since I said that we were nearly done with the main walk. It's also just behind the other pub. This is the Crown. Still got its bunting up from the Jubilee. It's looking rather nice. I'll just step back a bit because you can't really see it there, can you? Let's get across the road. There you go. There's the Crown looking resplendent in the sunshine. And there is the spire of the church. And that's where we're going now. Outside the church we have a set of mounting steps. Now normally we only see these outside pubs, but having said that, the crown is right next door. These are very well worn too. St Mary served as a minster to this area until the dissolution of the monasteries. Its spire, added in the 15th century, is at least 120 feet high. Some sources say it's as high as 191 feet. The church has the oldest recorded misericord in the country. A misericord is a small wooden structure on the underside of a folding seat. The building originates from the late 12th century. William the Conqueror gave the church to the prior and convent of Durham, and in 1426, Henry VI gave license to convert it into a collegiate church. It's got to be up there with one of the most magnificent churches we've seen so far, hasn't it? Look at the pinnacles up there. The attention to detail on those. This is a magnificent church, this. It really is. And you can see it for miles around thanks to that 
150 feet high that it's amazing now i did notice something about the churchyard as well which i i found quite funny there's a grave uh i think it's that one there where my finger's pointing it's uh, richard whiteley it's not the richard whiteley of countdown fame but there's a guy called richard whiteley in the churchyard so uh, I, I did think for a moment whether or not it might have been him seeing as he was from yorkshire i think i think he was from yorkshire but i think he's buried somewhere in leeds um so yeah um that was just amusing for a moment <laughs> thinking it might have been him anyway uh that's it for the main walk we've walked around Hemingborough. i'm now going to go down landing lane to finish this one off picture bit time guys So on the back of seeing that grave, I had to do a little bit of research and see where exactly Richard Wiley is buried. He is actually buried in North Yorkshire. I was wrong about him being buried in Leeds. He's in East Witton, which is close to Leeburn, or is it Leyburn? Uh, still in North Yorkshire. So uh, yeah, it's uh, we're not far from where he's buried, I suppose, here in Selby. It's the same county, at least. Okay, I've come down the end of Landing Lane, and that is the mighty River Ouse, which we've seen a fair few times before. There it is. I was hoping to get a shot as well of uh, Drax Power Station out here. But as you can see, this line of trees obscures the power station. You can just see one of its chimneys just there. At least you can see part of it. I was hoping for a better view than that. You can actually see it quite well from the village. So I was uh, hoping that this was going to give me the entire plant. But I suppose you saw enough of that in the Drax episode. Now, there used to be a ferry which ran from Herringborough, Hemingborough to Barnby on the Marsh. There's another um, lane like this, like Landing Lane, this is Landing Lane, uh, which is out that way somewhere. And it's called Barnby Ferry Road and it used to run uh, across to Barnby on the Marsh and over the River Derwent. Uh, whether there was one here or not, I don't know. But uh, I would imagine there were probably somewhere crossing the Ewes at this point, uh, historically. But uh, there isn't now, obviously, it's just uh, um, the end of the road, effectively. So there you go, that's Hemingborough. That is Hemingborough, and what a lovely place. And it looks so nice in the sunshine, doesn't it? And uh, hopefully the sunshine continues for my next episode, which is gonna be uh, coming your way next week. It's uh, a place which is not too far away from here, actually. It's just up the A63, begins with a C. There's a massive clue for you. This has been the parish of Hemingborough, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.